Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. If you are a regular bird feeder person, especially here to uh, the, maybe the middle uh, two-thirds of the, the lower 48 states, uh, you occasionally uh, in winter uh, may have a, a bluebird uh, at, at show up at your feeders or at your bird bath, and you're always excited because they're gorgeous birds. Um, and that's becoming a, a little more frequent. And I'm getting a lot of questions, especially this winter, as to why do I have so many bluebirds? How can I get them to stay? What is the key? But so what's the story? So I thought I'd cover that today. Uh, you know, if you look out your window and you see this scene, uh, lots of bluebirds, especially at a source of unfrozen water. Well, that is the key when you're attracting bluebirds to attract bluebirds in winter. How this works is, uh, you know, they nest up across most of the 48 states uh, and the east two thirds of it for the eastern bluebird. You guys out west with the mountain bluebirds and the western bluebirds. Well, they are primarily berry eaters and insect eaters. So you will see this scene a lot in the fall. You'll see the bluebirds in little flocks instead of just in pairs. You'll see small flocks of, of bluebirds uh, feeding on patches of available fruit. Like this is smilax or greenbrier. It's called a favored fruit. You may have uh, sumac patches and the, and the bluebirds may be in there eating on them. They're also eating on the insects that are trying to, to winter inside that seed head, but they'll also eat the berries as well. And believe it or not, poison ivy. You know, they love poison ivy. Uh, it's a great plant for wildlife, not so great for us that have allergies, but that those are, that, that's what they do. So they, the birds in the far north have to move out because the stress is just too high, typically in winter up there. So we have a, a group of the bluebirds, a segment of the bluebird population that move south during the winter. That's why, like here in the Kansas City region, we see a lot more bluebirds in the fall and winter than we do in the spring and summer because we get those northern birds who come down and they're looking for a dependable source of berries or a dependable unfrozen water source. And if you have a heated bird bath out or, or, or that is dependably unfrozen, they can settle in on that. I'm going to play a quick snippet here, and I can't talk during it, but... Uh, now, that is my backyard just a few days ago. And I have had them all winter, and, and I have a lot of you telling me you've had them coming in the winter. And once they come in, I am convinced. Are you guys that are watching this going, wait a minute, I want that. I don't have that. How do I get that to happen? Uh, I'm convinced that attracting bluebirds in winter is water. The key is water. And then once they come in and they see other birds eating at bird feeders, then they go over and check them out. Like this is... Uh, my squirrel buster classic bird feeder and it usually you know it does all of time have goldfinches on it and it also has house finches other birds and i'm convinced those bluebirds that bird bath which are just over to the right of this picture um see the other birds eating on the seed and they go hey what are they getting and they go over there and they land on the feeder and if they stick their big bill in and they pull out different depending on what they pull out is whether they stay or not they can't crack open sunflower seed or safflower seed but they can eat hola seed uh, like medium sunflower kernels is what I feed the most. And they love them. They eat them up. Uh, peanut pieces, they eat them up. And also mealworms. They love dried mealworms. I got another clip here to show you feeding on some dried mealworms. Now, when you're feeding dried mealworms, it's important to have that water source because they those are dehydrated. And so they it helps for them to have a water source close by so they can drink that. And they and they see it all the time at my, my feeder station, eating the dried mealworms, going to the bird bath, getting drinks of water, going back to the mealworms. So dried mealworms, hullus sun, sun, sunflower seed. I like the medium kernels. Spines and hearts are okay as well. And also peanut hearts, the little pieces of peanuts. You'll see them on your peanut feeder. And a lot of people have luck with them. I just never have on suet. I know that suet's a possibility and they'll eat on that. But remember, they can't eat 
yeah, seeds that have holes on them. Now they will settle in on fruit. I showed you all that natural fruit. So landscaping obviously is very good. So if you have a, a yard that's well landscaped with native uh, berry producing plants, then that can get them in there and, and keep them happy a lot whenever they're not getting food at your feed or, or even in, in to subsidize on that food because they're getting, they want, they need to vary their diet. They can't just eat dried mealworms all the time, or they just can't eat all, all the sunflower chips. So it helps to have varied food sources and native landscaping is a great way to do that. So you got them in. Okay. This winter has been very good for them. Lots of bluebirds, lots of people are so excited and have them there. The next question that comes along is how do I make them stay or how can I get them to stay? Well, that's not a real simple answer because a lot of these birds, like I said, they come down from the north and they're going to go back to their nesting habitat. Now, we do know that in years where there are, are, are good invasion or eru eruptions, as they're called, of certain species like uh, red crossbills, uh, pine siskins, red, uh, red red-breasted nuthatches. There, in the winters, there's a ton of them in the area. A lot of them come down. We know that some of those birds stick around and actually nest in areas like ours, which typically don't have those birds nesting. So uh, bluebirds, there may be some bluebirds that stay that, that instead of going back north. And of course, we have our resident birds that are here and they're going to nest here anyway. So to do that, you know, obviously you want to put up a good nest box. Now, what's a good nest box? Well, Make sure, and I've got whole videos, and we'll put a link in here for you, uh, to what makes a, a good nest box for a bluebird. The dimensions are important. Uh, the one and a half inch entrance hole, uh, four by four or five by five interior size uh, of, the, of the box facing east, southeast, at least five and a half feet, five, five and a half feet off the ground is really important uh, to, for their safety. So there's lots of things to consider. But if you provide those nesting opportunities, especially now in February, uh, they start checking those sites out. And if they find uh, a good nest site that they like, and they may stick around and they will nest here usually till the first of April is when we see them start to lay eggs in this area. Sometimes it's really warm a little earlier, but in your area, make sure that you have those that nesting site available. Now, no, that's not the only chance you'll have. If you don't get them to nest in that first nesting in April, remember, bluebirds nest three times a season, and even the year, some years, four. And uh, if they you miss out on the April nesting, they still may nest in your box in June or in, in August. And make sure you have that site and you clean it out after each nesting because they will not build uh, – they, 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 they can't take out the, the nesting material and they won't reuse it. They'll build a new nest on top of the old nest and they'll fill that box up, but you don't want to do that. You want to clean it out after each nesting. But providing those nesting sites is important and you might get them to instead of go back, going back north, you, you may get them to convince them to stay. Or if you have a, a pair that are no, local, they find your nest box, they may uh, abandon the one they had last year, or they, they might like yours better. So, But unless you have those out, it's hard to, to convince them to stay. Because once they, they, you know, the spring gets here and they start pairing up and they're territorial, they'll chase the other ones away. You're not going to see those little flocks like we do now in winter. And now we see those six, eight, 10, 15 bluebirds in a flock, that's going to be ending pretty soon once they start pairing up and they start establishing nesting territory. So now's your chance to get a box up and, and try to get them to stay. So it's a great idea for a program. You know, people love bluebirds. They're, they're you know, the reason not to because they're absolutely gorgeous. They sing beautiful songs. Um, and the nest boxes, like we have here, showing you uh, the inside of it and that nest lift in the bottom. And I'll put a link in for that, for what makes a good bluebird box to nest in your yard. But now is the time to, to try to get them to stay. I really do appreciate that, uh, sending in that idea for a program. It's a great idea. It's very timely. And I hope you uh, got some good, useful information out of it. Send in ideas for future programs. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that bell so you'll know when I'm on next. Until next time, let's talk birds.